Welcome to LabMist.com in our lab video series in Cisco ACS. You can find a complete list of ACS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will go through a process of integrating our Cisco ACS server with Active Directory so we have an access to AD user groups and attributes that you can use later on in authentication authorization policies. Here's our lab setup. We have a Cisco ACS Server 5.4, the IPF.100, and the VLAN32, and we also have a Windows 2008 domain controller at the IPF.40. In order to integrate an ACS to an active directory, you first need to make sure you have an account on the AD that ACS can use to join to the domain, and usually this can be any of the user account, but it's always recommended that you create a dedicated AD account for ACS to use, which is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So here on our active directory, users on computer, we're going to create a new user. So new user and first name is ACS, which is going to call last name AD, for example. And for the lock on name, we're going to call it ACS underscore AD. And then next for the password, we'll just do Cisco Cisco. And we do not want to change password or let the password expires. Next and finish. You can see by default, the user that you created is a member of domain users. And depending on the, your environment, for the most part, a domain users privilege should work just fine. But there might become some time that you might need to try the administrator privilege if you find the domain users is not sufficient. You click OK. And now that we have the user account created, we can go onto our ACS server and connect the ACS to our active directory. So here under the user and identity stores, external identity stores, we we'll click on Active Directory. Here what you need to make sure is the ACS server can resolve the domain name as far as checking by doing an lookup on the ACS. So what we can do is to SSH to our ACS server. And then perform an lookup. And our domain name is labminutes.com. You can see it's resolvable. And you also want to double check that the time between the ACS server is synchronized or I believe you cannot be too far off by five minutes. So here we have 1042, supposed to serve up 1040. So that should be sufficient. But again, ideally you want to have those time synchronized. Okay, so once you verify DNS resolution and time synchronization, so we can go here and try to join our ACS server to the domain. So here we have to specify our domain name, which is labminutes.com. For the username, we're going to use the user that we just created on the AD, which is ACS underscore AD, and the password is Cisco. And before we go ahead and join, we can always do test connection just to make sure everything looks good. And as long as you have all the green checks, you should be okay. So close that and go ahead and click join. And now it's just going to have to monitor the status. So right now I said join and connecting. And now it's just turned to join and connect it. So that means it has successfully joined to the Active Directory. And to verify that, you can go back to Active Directory Users and Computer and under the Computers Directory. Do a refresh. You can see our LM ACS PRI shows up as far as the computer that's been joined to the domain. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is to look up the AD groups that we would like to use later on as part of, of our policies creation. So here under the directory groups tab and click select and you can see it lists out all the user groups that currently exist on the active directory. So we're going to pick a couple ones off the list. So let's see if we can locate some of the basic group like AD domain computer right here as well as the domain users. And we also want to show you how to use the search filter. So let's say we want to look up a network admin and network support user group. So what we can do is to use the wildcard, which is asterisk, and then look up the word network. Click go. You can see right here, which is located in network admin and network support. And the last user group we want to search for is wireless user. So just type in wireless and then asterisk. OK. And there again, we have a wireless user. So we'll check that as well. And then we'll click OK. So here we have all the five AD user groups added. And if you tend to use a specific attributes or AD attributes also, this is where you can do it 
you have to type in the exact name and you can search for it and add it right here. And now we're going to save the changes. So now it's ready to go for you to use the Active Directory as a user database, but if you decide to use both Active Directory and local user database together with the local user database as a fallback if the user is not found in the Active Directory, then what you can do is to create a identity store sequences and we'll click create. And for the name, we're going to give it AD and then local because we want the ACS to look up the AD first and then fall back to local. Since we're not doing any certificate based just yet, we're going to do password based. And then we want to make sure that the AD is checked first and then followed by internal user and internal host. And for the section below, this is specifically for attributes retrieval if you only want to use your external database just to retrieve certain user attributes, which we're not going to use right now. So go ahead and click Submit. And just to show you real quick how to use the identity store sequence without going through the whole access policy or policy creation, but just to show you how that gets referenced, we're just going to pick one of these access services that has already been created by default. So here if you click under identity and this is where you will specify identity source that you want the ACS to look up. So if you click select you can see right here both AD1 which is just the active directory database by itself as well as the identity source sequences that we just created show up right here as well and you can just simply click on that to use it. So that wraps up our video on ACS 5.4 active directory integration and identity source sequences. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.